and hello again and here we are back in my garage for the next episode about my beginner's guide to motorcycle electrics this is part two and it's all about the starter motor circuit on a motorbike as its name suggests of course the starter motor starts the engine when you push the button on the handlebar turns the engine over and hopefully your bike fires up and so, once again, with no expense spent, I've drawn out a simple diagram of the standard circuit for the starter on the bike. We start off with the battery here at the bottom, positive and negative terminals, a wire going from the positive via a switch to the starter motor, followed by the earth wire coming back to the negative side of the battery. The switch, of course, is the button you press on the handlebar, to operate the starter motor and turn your engine over and hopefully start your engine. So far so good, nothing too complicated there. Except it's more complicated than that. And before we dive into why it's more complicated than that, I've got to show you an equation. Now don't panic, it's not difficult, it's not complicated, it's very very simple, but it's something you need to know about before we dive into the minute eye of the starter motor circuit. And here it is, here it is. V times A equals W, pretty damn simple. So V is voltage, A is ampage, equals W for wattage. Voltage times ampage equals wattage or watts. Now, you've probably heard of those terms before. Everyone knows about voltage. Your battery's 12 volts. Your house is probably 240 volts if you're living in the UK and W, wattage, you may have seen that before on things like um, bulbs in your house. You know, they're like 100 watt bulbs, 60 watt bulbs, that sort of thing. And what the wattage indicates is the amount of power required to drive an electrical component. So of course, a 40 watt bulb needs 40 watts, 100 watt bulb needs 100 watts, and the chances are the 100 watt bulb will be much brighter than the 40 watt bulb. So, once again then, back to this equation. The V voltage on a motorbike is 12, it's fixed, it's 12 volts. You do occasionally see a motorbike with 6 volts, but they're typically very old, small mopeds, dirt bikes, that sort of thing. Chances are, if you've got a bike, it's 12 volts. So we'll put a 12 on there make life a bit simpler for us 12 volts then we get ampage now ampage i'll come back to in a minute so we'll leave that for now but now let's talk about wattage and let's talk about starter motors because as i've already said the starter motor demands the most power on a motorbike and you'd be surprised how much power it needs so on a typical motorbike the wattage of a starter motor is somewhere around about 800 to 1000 watts. So let's keep it simple. Let's type in 1000 watts here. That's typical. Now I've got a Harley, a big inch Harley, with an aftermarket starter motor on it, and it requires 2000 watts to turn the engine over, so quite a lot. So that's fixed, but that can change depending on the component we're powering on the bike. Starter motor needs a thousand watts. Maybe an indicator bulb, a little indicator bulb needs five watts. And obviously you have all different components on the bike. But the vast majority only need, you know, maybe 50 or 100 watts max. So the starter motor is by far, by far, the most demanding component on a motorbike. So we've got this A here that we don't know what's going on the ampage. Now I have tried to find a good comparison to the real world when it comes to these two elements of the equation and the best one I can find is imagine this is something like a hose pipe and the size of the hose pipe the diameter of the hose pipe is the voltage that's the amount of uh, water can pass through it if you like whereas the ampage is the pressure of the water flowing through flowing through the pipe. So the higher the pressure, the more water can flow through, and therefore the higher the ampage, the more power we can get here. So while the voltage is fixed at 12 volts, the ampage is not. It can change depending on what you're powering, and that's something you need to be aware of. So if we do a bit of simple algebra, 
we take the 12 down here put it underneath the thousand that'll tell us the ampage the ampage of this is something like oh, da, 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 da. Uh, let's have a think about 80 or 90 something like that so let's make it easy let's say this is going to be 80 amps when it comes to the power required for the starter motor so keep that in mind keep that in mind voltage is fixed ampage can change and watch is just dependent on the power requirements of the particular component on the motorbike right good remember that and we'll come back to that on another video so we turn then to my first diagram here dun, dun, dun. the problem we've got is the power requirements of this starter motor is so high that it causes a problem in this circuit and it causes a problem in my switch on the handlebar and the problem is this switch is quite small with small contacts but the power going through it to drive the starter motor is very very high and what can happen is if you just run it like this every time you push that button you can get arcing the electricity wants to jump across this switch it doesn't do it straight away but as you push that button for a fraction of a second it's closing the switch up as it gets closer and closer the electricity can arc across like a spark plug almost and you think well so what so what well the so what is when it arcs across those contacts it can burn the contacts out in no time at all and the switch fails it either fails off or fails on which isn't a good idea so this is not enough to run a starter motor on your bike successfully so instead what we do is we turn over our diagram here and we start again and what we have here is again the battery the starter motor the switch so we still have the switch involved obviously because that's on your handlebar but the switch doesn't take power directly to your starter motor actually my arms get a bit tired now no instead it takes power to this thing here this little strange circular thing and it takes power there and of course this is the component so it needs earthing as well so it has an earth back to the earth of the battery and you think okay that's very well all very well but we haven't yet <laughs> done anything with with the uh, starter motor and that's because this thing is the starter relay in the circuit and what a starter relay is is a switch within a switch it has two great big contacts here and it has a very thick cable going directly from the positive side of the battery big thick cable here big thick cable can take lots of amps no problem at all and it's got another contact here which again another thick cable which goes all the way to the starter motor so we'll put that in nice and thick followed by another cable back down to the earth of the battery and that's pretty much how things work on the vast majority of motorbikes however if you go look at your bike now you'll see yes i can find the relay i can find these thick cables going to it and from it to the battery i can even find the small wires going from the battery to the switch and onwards to the relay to activate it but what you probably won't find is the cable going from the starter motor all the way back down to the negative terminal on the battery and the reason for that i've already covered in part one which is that on a motorbike oftentimes the frame itself is used as part of the earth circuit now the starter motor is bolted to the engine and the engine is bolted to the frame and the frame has a thick cable going from itself back to the negative terminal of the battery and that's the way the vast majority of starter motors are earthed on motorbikes and so that's the theory now let's turn to the practice so in my hand here i have a starter relay pretty simple thing it's got these two small wires which go to and from the battery which activate the main connection here which carries the power from the battery through these terminals here onto onto the starter motor pretty simple thing this cost me about i think uh, 14 pounds generic 12 volt starter relay used on lots of bikes lots of cars even 
and if yours fails don't panic because something like this will work no doubt the manufacturer would like you to buy their own particular model but generally speaking this works just fine so that's the starter motor relay here we have a starter motor i happen to have this is quite an old one an old design so it's quite heavy this is actually made to fit a 1970s harley but they all work in a similar way so this is essentially an electric motor and I'm not going to explain how they work. I'm sure there are lots of cool, very good videos on YouTube which will explain the internals of a starter motor. But basically, you apply the power here and this cog on the end spins around very quickly and that's how it works. You let go of the button on handlebar, it cuts the power and it stops. End of story. But it's not so simple because this cog here is spinning around really quickly far too quickly to actually start an engine which is just going vroom, vroom, vroom. This might be going 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 RPM, even 10,000 RPM. So what needs to happen is this cog, this spinning cog needs to be geared down before it can engage with the engine itself and start the engine. And it does so via a secondary cog here, a great big cog, which gears down the speed to a speed that's appropriate to start the engine of your motorbike. Not only does it gear it down, it also increases the torque because this thing here would not be powerful enough to turn over a big engine. No way, no way. But by gearing it down using a secondary big cog, then it can work just fine. So when it comes to starter motors on your motorbike, where are they or where is it? It does change, of course, depending on which, which uh, model you've got. But generally speaking, it's close as possible to the crankshaft on your bike because of course it's got to engage with that crankshaft and turn it over so typically it's low down behind your cylinders now the good news is that the starter motor isn't covered in oil it's not part of the insides of your engine which makes it a lot easier to remove and replace if needed there's usually a cover over it to cover it up then there might be a couple of bolts holding it in place we can't move undo them and you can lift it away from your engine and then check it out replace it repair it or whatever and also of course these motors can be repaired depending on, on what model it is but you can buy repair kits for electric motors like this for starter motors like this particularly for older bikes but I won't go into that right now because it involves things like bushes and commutators and all that kind of stuff which is not really part of this beginner's guide to to starter motors when it comes to failures, oftentimes the failure, if you do have one, is because of a common fault or a common type of fault with motorbikes, which is the connections fail. They either break, become loose or corrode. So all these connections need to be checked to make sure they're all OK. And I covered that in, in part one. The relay itself, these things here, tend to be quite reliable. I've never had one fail, but if it does fail, as I say, it's not the end of the world. These things cost, you know, pennies or £14 in my case. So it's not the end of the world. Starter motors, of course, are much more expensive. This one here was around about £250 for an old Harley. I have no idea how much they are for, for um, brand new motorbikes, but I suspect they're quite expensive. The good news is they don't tend to fail suddenly. They tend to sort of wear and slowly degrade over the years. I've never had a starter motor that just sort of worked one day and didn't work the next. But I, I have had starter motors which over the years kind of slowly, you know, lose their potency, if you like. They start to wear inside, you know, they get dirty inside, whatever. So I wouldn't worry too much about it suddenly just stopping and leaving you stranded by the side of the road. If it does stop, chances are it's not the starter motor, it's a connector somewhere. You might have some rubbish, some corrosion in the button on your handlebar. You might have a broken wire somewhere and that's where I'll be looking if I had a problem with my starter motor not turning over the engine on a motorbike. Yeah, so I think that's about it when it comes to the starter motor circuit on your motorbike. As I say, this is just a beginner's guide to motorcycle electrics, so we won't be diving deep into things like the internals of the starter motor and so on. But if you do have any other questions that I've not covered yet, then just put it in the comments and I'll try and reply to it in the next few days if possible. 
Yeah, so I think the next video, part three, on this small series of motorcycle electrics will be all about the charging system of your motorbike. Things like the alternator, the rectifier, what a rotor and stator is, and so on. What they do, where they are, and what goes wrong, and hopefully how you can check and fix any problems you might have. So that will be the next video I shall make in a week or two when I've got time. So for now then, that's it. So thanks for watching and cheers.